we uh, go to question D, author's perspective. We read lines 51, 63. What cultural expectations and values does Sincero reveal in these paragraphs? Uh, it is what this show you, what that shows you. Shows you what? The what the dominant position, position uh, the dominant position of men. Men are what taking the dominant position of the house. Right? So Sincero, how did we know? When Sincero described how the great grandfather carried her off with a sack, if he put a sack on her and he took her as she as if she was a fancy chandelier, chandelier that you put in the ceiling. So this show you here when he says, uh, uh, where is it? A sack over her head and carried her off just like that, as if she were a fancy chandelier. When you like something so much, when you go to Ikea and you buy a fancy chandelier, just put her in the box and you took her home. That's how her grand great-grandfather did with his her great-grandmother. He just took her as if he taking a chandelier. So the dominant role is for men. So men, what did women do? They did what? Uh, they put their sadness, set their sadness on the elbow. They set they looked out at the window so women were weak they had nothing to do but looking out of the window so she took her name esperanza but she doesn't want to take her life she doesn't want to repeat it she doesn't want to be weak she doesn't want to look at her dreams out of a small window at school, they say my name funny, as if the syllables were made out of tin and hurt the roof of your mouth. But in Spanish, my name is made out of a softer something like silver, not quite as thick as sisters' names, Magdalena, Magdalena, which is uglier than mine. Magdalena, who at least can come home and become Nini, but I am always Esperanza, so they say to Magdalena, uh, Nini. Esperanza is, is said like this in Mexican, but if you say it in English, it might be sound not that good. Okay. I would like to baptize myself, like um, uh, take a new name for myself, baptize myself like uh, Magda Magdalena is Nini. I would like to have one under a new name, a name more like the real me. Not Esperanza, the one nobody sees, Esperanza as Lissandra or Maritza or Dizzy, the ex. Yes, something like Dizzy, the ex will do. She wants to change her name, take a, um, a nicer one. Mango says goodbye sometimes. I like to tell stories. I tell them inside my head. I tell them after the mailman says, here is your mail, here is your mail, he said. I make story for my life for each step my brown shoe takes, I say. And so she trugged up the wooden stairs, her sad brown shoes taking her to the house she never liked. I like to tell stories. I'm going to tell you a story about a girl who didn't want to belong. Well, who is the girl who doesn't want to belong? You will know. We didn't always live on Mango Street. Before that, we lived on Loomis on the third floor. And before that, we lived... Aha, uh -huh, what is this? These are what? These are the same lines of the first of the story. The same lines. She started, so she's telling us that girl who doesn't belong is the narrator. And before that, we lived on Killer. Before Killer, it was Paulina. Uh, uh, uh. In Mango Street and Red House, the house I belong but do not belong to. I put it down on paper and then she, uh, the ghost doesn't ache so much. I write it down and Mango says goodbye sometimes. She doesn't hold me with both arms. She sets me free. I put it down on paper. What? The story. The story, she put down the story of a, what, of a girl who doesn't want to belong. Okay? Doesn't ache so much. I write it down and Mango says goodbye sometimes. One day I will pack my bags of books and paper 
One day I will say goodbye to Mango. I am too strong for her to keep me here forever. One day I will go. The author's perspective. Reread lines 83, 85. What might the author be saying about the power of writing? The power of writing. Power of writing is what? She says that the power of writing is a way to express and release her feelings. And to feel free of difficult circumstances about around her. And we've always said that most of our authors, most of our famous authors have suffered in their life and in their childhood. And they escaped the circumstances of their lives through writing, through reading. Friends and neighbors will say, what happened to that Esperanza? Where did she go with all those books and papers? So she will leave. She's promised herself, I will one day leave this house. Why did she march so far away? They will not know I have gone away to come back. Uh-uh, I have gone away to come back. For the ones I left behind, for the ones who cannot out. What's run away? What's run away to come back? This is a paradox. And a paradox is a statement, a statement that could contradicts itself. She went away. When you go away, you go away because you want to leave. You don't go away to come back. Paradox are often like riddle, which meanings that are difficult to interpret. In lines 91, when the narrator says that she has gone away to come back, she seems to be contradicting herself. What do you think this statement means? The statement of she ran away. Where is it here? Run, I've gone away to come back. What does it mean? Huh. Think. Uh, what is Esperanza? Esperanza is a little poor girl who lived with her family in a house on Mango Street. A broken uh, old house that she doesn't like. And she wants to be a writer. She wants to leave the house. Leaving the house means that she was not poor anymore. Because house resembles poverty for her. And for us too. We understand she's poor and she lives in this house because she's poor. So she wants to go out to come back, to come back as a strong one. She doesn't want to be her grandmother. She wants to be herself. She wants to have the rule of her life. She wants to go back, build herself, uh, accomplish her dreams, and come back a strong one, a strong writer, and leaves poverty behind. So she's not leaving her family. She's leaving poverty. Okay? This is her dream. Thank you, girls. We finished the story. See you later.